Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Whip Band Podcast, episode number 69. Nice. 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 <sighs> so anyways, uh, this time we're talking about uh, Justice League Unlimited season three. Um, so uh, what did you think of the season overall? I I can't decide if it's better than season two, but it certainly is just as good. I would say season two is better, honestly. Um, I don't know. I think I think season two just had a more interesting story overall. Like the, uh, season three is not bad for sure. Um, mm-hmm. I would put it like above season one, probably. But like, oh yeah, I th- I think I mean I still liked season one, but like I just think there was like this one does have kind of an overarching plot, but the overarching plot isn't as interesting as season two. It's like I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's more yeah. direct, I guess. It's more direct. Yeah, it's like the the whole kind of idea of this season is like, oh, we have the superhero team, which is like every superhero in existence, every superhero you could think of is on a team together. So, mm-hmm. what's the next logical step? Let's do a villain team. That's every villain on a team, you know, together. It's right. kind of just, which is a very simple, not you know, idea of for. Uh, <clears throat> for like a, a, you know, big villain thing. Yeah, um, I do. But like it's the fine. wrench that they throw in it at the last few episodes, though. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, which we will we will get into that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just <clears throat> they definitely went for a little bit more of a like story lot, concept of like each episode kind of being a different sh- story. But like each, they, there are little links to that overarching plot here and there. Like, um, I, I also think like season two had a lot more building up to it outside of just that season two. I th- as well, I think was was another big part of it. Is like right. things have been building up to the, the season two, which is the Cadmus season, um, for like a long time in the DC animated universe. Like things have been building to that for so, so many like little pieces have been building to that. Whereas this season just feels more like it, it works. It's like, it's like it's set up in this season, but it wasn't necessarily something built. Like there, I guess there's some things building to it. Like, like there was a point where Lex had a superhero, super villain team. Mm -hmm. And then eventually Grodd took over a super villain team. And then you can kind of like, that's the last time we saw Grodd, I'm pretty sure. And it's like, Oh, you can kind of fill in the blanks. Like, Oh, from that point, he continued to build up that team until it got to where it is now. Like you can be like, okay, that's probably what happened. So there are little things like that, but overall it's not as like interesting or as big of a buildup, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, which isn't a bad thing you know it's like i i I feel because i feel like season two was very much felt to me like what they had been slowly building towards like from very early on Mm -hmm. in this universe and it was it finally happened in season two and it's like okay the big thing we've been building up to for how long has happened and but we're still doing another season okay what do we do now okay yeah this works you know yeah it i Season two was like the ending of a slow buildup, and this one was like the final season of like, okay, quick showstopper, let's go. Yeah, yeah, like, okay, what do we want to do as a big, fun finale? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, which I think works fine, um, you know? Yeah, I really loved it. Yeah, yeah. so uh, let's get in. Uh, the first episode is titled I Am Legion. Uh, so this is the one, okay. So this is the one Lex Luthor escapes. This one just pretty much serves as a nice introduction to Grodd's uh, team. Um, he sends Luthor and them on a mission to, um, is this the one where they go to the, the Hawk Island? The, um, you know, the, the, In the Hawkman pilots. No, not Hawkman. The, the pilot, the Hawk. You know the the pilots from World War Two, the Hawks. The, oh, you what know are like they called? <laughs> black I think Hawks. it is. Yeah, the Black Black Hawks. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I think that's this this episode. Um, it's kind of like the introduction to the whole villain team up thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, oh, right? Because uh, Grodd sends Lex off on a kind of wild goose chase to prove himself. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So so this episode mostly just serves as an introduction to the the main kind of plot of the season. And, you know, I I feel like it does, you know, and, and it also has a little thing with like Flash being nervous to talk to Fire, <laughs> um, which never really plays out in the rest of the season. Like we never yeah, see them don't... together again. It's like they're trying to set up a relationship. They mm-hmm. never they never continue with it. Uh, but just for this episode, and I was really disappointed. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to see more of that. Um, and Hawkgirl's being a, a wing, uh, Flash's wing girl. Um, ha, because she has wings. <laughs> She's wing man. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really have, I really don't have a lot to say about the episode overall. I mean, <clears throat> it starts with like Lex escaping prison. Oh, and it introduces the Brainiac thing, which is like... The big right. thing is like Rod has a piece of great of Brainiac, and yeah. that's what tempting Lex because Lex, you know, had all this you know infinite power and knowledge, and he's basically a god, and then he <laughs> lost it all, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so that's all he back. Yeah, and that's sort of the entirety of Lex's motivation throughout the season. Which works. Um, I mean, it makes sense, especially after the end of the last season, you know, that that's kind of he just has become so obsessed with this. Um, But yeah, so I don't have a lot more to say about the episode. Uh, I only have. It's interesting that they brought back the Blackhawks. Oh, just yeah. The that World is, War II episode. That is true. That is true. Yeah. It's like they were just in the world. And then it's like, oh, he's the only one still alive. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it, it was it was nice to see. Yeah. Because I liked them in that episode. In the World War II They were cool. So it was nice to see them. Um, Yeah. And the next episode is Shadow of the Hawk. Now, this is the one that introduces Hawkman. Um, mm-hmm. Which... I don't know. He's 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 he's, he's kind of creepy. He's just stalking Hawk yeah, Girl. He's full stalker. Um, and then he has this whole thing of like, oh, it's like I'm, we're just the reincarnation of these people, these lovers, and whatever. Which I guess in the later episode it turns out that that's true. I guess in a way, in a to an extent. I, I, is, yeah, I suppose that is what that episode meant, right? Yeah, um, which we'll get into when we get to that. I, I feel like it's hard to get too, too much into this episode because it's so connected to that episode that happens later. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a part one and a part two, except they're separated by, you know, by other episodes in the season almost. Right. Um, but yeah, so... I, I, I do like the they're they're you know they're kind of playing up the whole thing with like Green Lantern might be a little jealous but like is he you know which mm-hmm. I you know works um, but yeah so I I don't know I it, weirdly I don't feel like I have a lot to say about this one either like it's I, I feel like it's hard to talk about without the this the next part to it right right because the next I, part you actually get the story of like. You know you what happened to ancient going Egypt. On, yeah. yeah. The only part of this episode that really sticks out to me is just, uh, I think it was Martian Manhunter going through the video feeds of all of Hot Girls' battles and him being oh, yeah. in the background of every single one. Yeah, that's just very creepy. Yeah. She, at first, she's like, "Oh, that's a." He's at two of them. And she's like, "Oh, that's a coincidence." And he's like, "No, nope, there's another one." She's like, "Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah." Um, also, the fact that he changed his name to Carter Hall. At first, I was like, "I was like, wait a minute, her name is Shaira Hall." Like, that's weird. Changing your last name to the last name of the person you're stalking. That's yeah, that's that's a. Uh... That's a bit uh, red flag. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I did think it was interesting, like how I guess the idea of like how you can view something differently based on the perspective. Like he's viewing this, the whatever it was called, the the thing that gave him the vision or whatever as this like magical thing that's giving him this vision. Whereas, and then Shaira is just like, Oh, it's just a, a database of, of like 
of of whatever you know the the ship's like log and database of what happened you know Mm -hmm. it's not anything mystical whatever you know so it's like it's kind of like how you know oh these aliens from another world come and 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 humans view everything as like this magic and these they're these gods and it's like oh but they're really not you know which i think is always an interesting i uh, believe the saying is sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic right yeah exactly exactly um something along those lines yeah yeah it's yeah no i think that's that's always an interesting uh thing to explore in stories i think sometimes Mm -hmm. but uh yeah so i'm ready to move on to the next one if you are sure so next we have chaos at the earth's core which I just want to say, how is there skies in the Earth's core? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But and, um, and plant life without proper sunlight. But like they do have sunlight. They have a sky and everything. Yeah. So where does that come from? I don't know. Doesn't matter. It's a, it's a, it's a cool episode. Um, I, again, I don't have a lot to say about. It. I feel like it's a very. It's. I mean, it's. It's. You know, they. 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 They get taken. Some of the heroes get taken to another dimension. Who is it? It's. Um. Who is it? It's like. Uh. It's like Supergirl, Star Girl, the Star Girl's dad. Who's the? I forget what his name is. <laughs> the I robot dude. No clue either. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other guy. Who? Who else was there? It was like another person there, that I do not remember at the moment. It was definitely was- another one. It wasn't Green, Green Lantern. Lantern. It was. Okay. It was. Yeah, I'm reading this. I'm, I just read the description. Dude, how do I forget that? Um, it well, seems like that would be thinking, like obvious. Like, <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure it was Green Lantern, but if he doesn't remember it, like that just sounds like something that we would remember. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah. So, Supergirl loses her powers because of like no sun or whatever, or mm-hmm. like. Yeah, no sunlight, right. but apparently enough sunlight for plant life. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah, I know. Um, so they introduced this whole uh, idea in this episode of like, I guess superheroes being jealous of other superheroes, like popularity. <laughs> Which I mean, not not that that's never been shown in the show before, but like I feel like this is like the first episode to really. I mean, I guess it's that was kind of shown in like the Booster Gold episode a little bit, but oh, um, right. But um, yeah, this is to another level where like Stargirl really doesn't like Supergirl. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I, I did, however, like the final battle of this episode where like Supergirl is like just pushing herself despite the fact that she's like practically dying, and she's like, yeah, like, there's that, there's, like, there's that, she's just like. She, but she just keeps pushing herself. I really like, actually liked that. And then eventually, obviously, Stargirl comes in and like saves her. Mm-hmm. But um, just because she's basically powerless at that, like almost powerless yeah. at that point, stronger right, than but a she human. Keeps, but but she keeps going and like uh, it's almost like that episode from season two of Justice League, where like Superman travels to the future and like he loses his powers, but like mm-hmm. even though he doesn't have his powers, he's still a badass, you know. <laughs> Um, it's basically like the same kind of thing. And um, I don't know if I knew this beforehand, but with her like in her weakened state without this sunlight, kryptonite didn't affect her as much. Yeah, which was an interesting thing. I didn't fully understand how that worked, um, but it still did affect her, but it wasn't like as much. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, and, and another, I guess, interesting thing is they just notice a f- the couple villains that are here that are like villains they know of. And they're like, what are they doing here? Which is because mm-hmm. it, it's the one is like a Superman villain. I, what's he called? He's like the the guy with the, the kryptonite in his chest. Um, you yeah, got see, me I, there. I, I, yeah, I know. I'm reading the description. His name is not in the description. Well, that's okay. That's okay. We'll we'll figure it out. It's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, and this this also most of the episode seems um, like kind of like a one off episode that's not related to any major uh, overarching plot. 
But then the ending of the episode does because you find out that like the villain is they're like who like how'd you get here what were you doing and like and he's like he's like you know before he talks there's like the thing that like fries his brain or whatever yeah yeah um which kind of came as a surprise to me because i wasn't expecting that and i was like oh i was like oh he's on this the 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 super villain team oh (laughs) makes sense um yeah yeah i i feel like there's not a lot of interesting things in the episode though it's just it's very much a simple like they go you know superheroes travel to uh, another place they they help somebody out i don't know yeah i mean i guess the main thing is that like ending bit of oh this was set in motion by right this whole big overarching plot by this big group of supervillains Right, right. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to move on to the next episode if you are. Sure. Okay, so next we have To Another Shore. Um, and this, I believe, is the one... Yes, this is one where the villains are trying to free the like the old Viking guy who's frozen. Oh, right. That's supposed and, to be immortal. Yeah. Um, I like the idea that like Wonder Woman is like an ambassador for uh, the Amazon. I think that's cool. Yeah, like, it makes sense. It makes sense because she's like the only person from Amazon who's also like um, integrated into the rest of the world, like gets got mm-hmm. to know the rest of the world. Um, and I think it shows some like growth for her character in a way because I feel like in a lot of the early Justice League episodes, she didn't see – she always seemed like very – young naive didn't know a lot you know like she, you wouldn't imagine the original wonder woman from the the first season of justice league being an ambassador to like for anything because she's like she's not like mature enough or like grown up doesn't know enough yet or like isn't there yet but then there were definitely situations where she was just like brute force her way through the situation yeah. and that's it yeah but like i feel like very subtly throughout the show it's been showing that like she's you, you've kind of seen that she's gotten to know um just integrate into society better and better she's mm-hmm. gotten to know you know know things you know beyond you know she's not still like the fish out of water character you know like she's gotten beyond that she's become basically like you know part of the culture of you know outside of amazon um, right. So it's like you get to that point. Yeah, it would make sense that she would uh, be ready to be an ambassador for Amazon at this point. <clears throat> um, yeah. And also she can hold her breath underwater for quite a while. <laughs> I, I was impressed. <laughs> I was like, she has. when was the last time she went up for air? Like she can't breathe underwater. I know that. Um, I mean... She's legit just holding her breath underwater for a while. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I. she's super strong, super fast, all these things. I would imagine she is, could hold her breath for a long time, but like. Yeah. Yeah. Impressive. It was, it was impressive. Um, always impressed by, by Wonder Woman's uh, strength. Mm-hmm. I know you are too. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Again, this is another episode. I feel like there's a lot of episodes in this season where I, I feel like I don't have a lot to say about them. Like they're they were fun episodes, but I just feel like there's not a lot of super interesting things going on. You know what I mean? I, I feel like this season just really shines in like second half or last quarter ish. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It definitely closer to the end. Um, but yeah, in general, I think there's a lot of it that's kind of the, the storytelling isn't as intricate as season two as like interesting, I guess. There's not as mm-hmm. much. Yeah. Like the villain, the the villains are more simple. You know, the villains of, of season two were a lot. It was a lot more interesting. It was like 
it was Cadmus, which was not maybe not a full on villain. Like they weren't necessarily evil, but it was like the 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 kind of um you know, and there was the whole thing with like Superman kind of slowly going too far throughout right. the season, and like there's there's a lot more intricacies. Whereas this is a much more simple like villain team, superhero team. There you go, you know. <laughs> um, I, and like there are more interesting stuff than just that, but like like you know like Lex's motivation of wanting to get the Brainiac thing and mm-hmm. and all that, and there's fighting amongst the villains themselves and stuff. But uh, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know. I don't have a lot to say about the episode. Do you have much more? I'm all good. All right. So next up we have Flash and Substance. So this is the one where there's the Flash Day. There's like the um, <laughs> the statue or the the museum, the Flash Museum. That's right. Yeah. Uh, which I, I really like. This it's it's nice. I think this is a really good episode to really showcase you know flash in right. like in his own community kind of because it's central city right where flash is from and kind of see it like like he's just zooming by and he's like saying hi to all these people he's like hey mrs whatever whatever <laughs> like you know he's just such a such a nice dude for your friendly neighborhood flash you know like I, there's so much that i love about this episode <laughs> He's talking to like everybody, just randomly off the street. Uh, he talks about like preparing his speech, which then just ends up being like two sentences and be like, "That's all I got." You know, have a good day, everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, the, that's great. Talking to one of the criminals who planned to kill him that day. And be like, you know, you're off your meds, buddy. You gotta get back on them. You know yep, that's not the how trickster. they work. Mm-hmm. And she's um, like, oh yeah, after you're finished with that drink, turn yourself in. Got me again, Flash. <laughs> oh, the trickster, yeah. Buddies. So I speaking of it. the trickster, um, so the trickster, he's so obviously his thing is he's like he's very like childish, kind of like mm-hmm. he likes to do all these crazy like childish, goofy ways to like take out his superhero i want to say similar to the joker but you know not in the same not quite the same but like it's almost like the flash's joker kind of it's not as malicious yeah um which is interesting because i don't know if you noticed but he was voiced by mark hamill oh i i mean i could tell because i i know what mark hamill's voice sounds like right Um, right Another, which interestingly, which obviously Mark Hamill voices the Joker, but also, uh, but like, okay, so his trickster voice is more, sounds more like the actual Mark Hamill, whereas Joker's voice sounds more like he's really putting on a voice, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But interestingly, there was a, I think in in the 90s, I'm pretty sure, there was a Flash, live action Flash show. Um, And the trickster was played by Mark Hamill. Oh. And in the, in the newer Flash show, the CW Flash show, there was like one episode where there was like a new, there was a tr- the trickster was in it, but he was like a new trickster, and there was like a guy who used to be the trickster that you meet later on, who was like an older guy, and mm-hmm. it was also Mark played by Mark Hamill. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I think that's I was like the voice actor. I was like. It is like, of course. Who else would you get to play the trick to do the voice of the trickster? Mark Hamill like, has a lock on the trickster. Yeah, I mean, you know, Mark Hamill is the trickster, and <laughs> you know, and the Joker. But it, it makes sense because it's like, okay, like, of course they're going to be able to get Mark Hamill because, like, I mean, he's already been in the DC animated universe a lot as the Joker. Right. So you know, and of course, you know, Mark Hamill's the type of person who'd be down for anything like this. He he loves doing this kind of thing, you know. <laughs> um but i i just i noticed that and i was just geeking out man i was like i was like that's awesome yeah that's fun um but yeah so yeah and then so the other villains so these are all like classic flash villains um the trickster is a classic flash villain uh captain cold yeah boomerang um, boomerang and um 
um, <laughs> mirror master. That's it. Yeah, that's it's like mirror yeah. something. Mirror. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, and and I, I I kind of liked one aspect that I liked was so there was the whole thing like Orion is in the episode. Orion is very like confused about like why people love the flash so much. He's like, Oh, he's Mm -hmm. just a buffoon, whatever. And Batman is very like, no, Batman understands it. Batman's like, which is interesting because obviously the flash's like style is like opposite of Batman's, right? Batman is very dark, mysterious, always serious. Flash is just running around making jokes all the time. Just like funny, whatever. But that's part of why people love him is because he's so just lovable kind of right like he's just this the lovable mm-hmm. goofball but he's also he is still a hero at the end of the day no matter how you know no matter how just ridiculous he <laughs> acts you know he's still a hero he mm-hmm. still does the heroic things and it's like at the end orion's like oh, i think i finally realized why you know everybody respects him this much you know because from you know orion's perspective it's like you got to be a hardened warrior huh Right. You know, um, but I do like that Batman was kind of like, no, no, I, I, I get it. Like, like, cause you know, Batman, despite the fact that he's very different than Flash still respects him, you know, cause he sees that like actual, like the real the true hero in him that's exit, you know, beyond just the, the goofiness that he has, you know? Um, so I, I really liked that aspect of the episode. Hmm. <laughs> Um, and Batman had a nice badass moment where he like shoots his thing, his like missile thing, and it like oh, yeah, and it, like, it like goes into the mirror and like you missed, and it's like no, no, he didn't miss, you dummies. <laughs> like he's Batman. He's like clearly he did it so just the Flash would see it and know where mm-hmm. to go, <laughs> how to get out of the mirror dimension. It's like um, I always like those little. Just, I always like badass Batman moments. They're always good. Yeah. Or like the just... time in season two when the one guy's like, speaks in the other language and he's like, oh, you probably don't understand me, blah, 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 blah. And then he just goes up to him. He's like, and he, and he says in that language, like, I do understand. Like, and then he's like, I forget exactly, but it was just a really cool moment. And you're like, yep. Mm-hmm. I also really love the moments where like, a hero will do something and it seems completely pointless and you know like it was an absolute failure and of course the villain points it out and then it's like oh no yeah. that wasn't the point oh he, no i succeeded in exactly what i wanted to do he wasn't you trying learn? to hit you he was trying to do this yeah exactly because mm-hmm. like haha and then all of a sudden flash pops out and stops him and he's like there we go <laughs> Um, but it also like makes sense in a way like, yeah, of course, Batman is going to know trust Flash better than like Orion and, and believe in Flash more because Batman has worked with Flash a lot longer. You know, he they they were both they both worked together since the beginning of Justice League. He, they're both some of the original seven, you know. Um, this is yeah, over- just a really good episode to showcase the Flash in his element. Because every yeah, sometimes he seems like the the odd one out of the original, or like the least yeah. important. But this just yeah. really shows him ideal in his element, doing his thing and being good at it. Yeah, no, I, I, I yeah, I really like that, and it's like, and it's it's so nice to see like like he knows what he's doing. He knows mm-hmm. these villains so well. Like again, like the the scene with the trickster where like Orion's trying to like threaten him and like give us the information we want. Where are they? What are they? What are they planning? Whereas Flash is like, no, I know him. I know how to deal with him. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I forget what is the trickster's name was, but he's like, whatever. Like it's like. You know, you're off your meds again, aren't you? He's like, here, can you please help us? Yeah, I guess. Like, you know, it was like, <laughs> like, yeah, he knows how to deal with him. He's, he's done it many times before. He's dealt with him many times before, you know. Um, it's a really nice touch. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have a lot more to say. I'm ready to move on to the next one if you are. Sure. So next is Dead Reckoning, which, uh, what is this episode again? Oh, okay. So this is the one with the 
the ghost guy. Oh, yeah, that possesses them at various points. Yeah, yeah, uh, which was cool. I, I liked some of the p- parts, like, there was that part, like, where he possesses Batman and, like, makes Batman shoot somebody, and Batman's, mm-hmm. like, <gasps> like freaking out because, like, you know, Batman doesn't use guns, he doesn't shoot people. And then right. they're, like... Um, but also, like, Grodd's trying to turn people into monkeys, into apes. <laughs> I, I yeah. still am like what like that's that what that's what that's his big what <laughs> that, that might be like Grodd's like original like comic book motivation though probably is yeah it's just so stupid I'm like I'm like yeah no wonder every everybody else wants to follow Luthor now because they're all like oh your plan was dumb <clears throat> which that's actually this actually is an important episode because this is the one. Um, that ends with Luthor taking over the the group, or it might be the beginning of the next episode. I don't remember. It's somewhere where it's like he's like, uh, like like Luthor captures Grodd, and he's like, "All right, I'm in charge now," um, which obviously is a big turning point uh, in the season. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Also, the the dead the the dead guy was cool. Um, <laughs> it was cool that like he had to like possess people in order to communicate like you can't see yeah. him yeah unless you're a really really old monk then you can see him and communicate with him but yeah I also really love that he just immediately possesses Superman and starts talking and Batman immediately on the uptake oh it's that guy well, yeah cause like he, he he's met him before apparently I wonder if he was in an episode of the Batman show? I don't know. I mean, they kind of made it sound like... It kind of implied, it, but... like, it was like, oh, they've met before and they had this yeah. whole, like, backstory. And so I'm like, I'm guessing they did, but I'm guessing, like, at least, you know, at one point. Um, mm-hmm. I am watching the the Batman show now, Batman the Animated Series. Um, I haven't gotten through all of it, obviously. Because if I did, then I would know for sure if he was in it or not. <laughs> but it just, it just seems like he... It seems like they were referencing, like, it's something that's happened in the past. So it's right. like, yeah, yeah. And then however many hours later, he finally unpossesses Superman, who finishes his ses- sentence and then goes, why am I yeah. in Africa? Yeah. <laughs> or you where know, they were. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, they were in Africa. I think it was in Africa because it was like Gorilla City that they went mm-hmm. to. Um, one thing that I was... So in this episode, I was like, oh, at the beginning of the episode, I was like, Batman and Wonder Woman are in this episode. Oh, maybe they'll get more into their like relationship. That'd be interesting. <laughs> I want to see more of that. They didn't, and they they didn't in the season really at all. Yeah, I guess. Not. And it's like I, I don't know. I felt like I felt like it was something they've hinted at many times in the show, and they just never really fully mm-hmm. had a conclusion to. Like I think the last time it was referenced. Or brought up as far as I remember I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure the last time was the episode where Wonder Woman turned into a pig that sounds about right to me yeah I think that was the last time or the one where they turned into kids whichever one was I think the pig episode was after the one I that they turned so, into kids yeah. but they were in the same season they were in season one of Unlimited but yeah, I think that might be the last time. And it's kind of sad. I wanted to see more of that. Like, I, don't know, I was just like interested to see like what the conclusion of that would be, you know? Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't have a lot to say about the episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'm good too. Next up is Patriot Act. Um, which I, t- I have to... Is this with the general? Oh, yeah. The general turns into like a Hulk-like creature, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. The <clears throat> J.K. Simmons general. Who literally, like, dude, I feel like... I feel like whenever they create characters for J.K. Simmons to voice, they always try to make them look like J.K. Simmons. They... Yes, every Because there's this character. I love it. It's like um, an invincible Omni Man looks kind of mm-hmm. like J.K. Simmons. Like, yep. Cave Johnson even does. Yeah, it's like 
it's it's just I, I just find that interesting because i remember the first time i saw this character and like i think he showed up he was in like a part of season one like one episode of season one he showed up um he was obviously in season two way more because that was the mm-hmm. cabinet season but like i remember thinking like oh he looks kind of like jk simmons and then he started talking and i was like oh <laughs> that's literally jk simmons voice okay <laughs> Um, you can always tell just by looking who J.K. Simmons' voice is in a show, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think this is the only episode that really uh, gets into Cadmus in this season, and kind of like the aftermath of like where Cadmus is now, uh, which I, I thought was interesting to see. And it, it kind of you kind of get a nice like double perspective of like the different perspectives of like you could have after the whole Cadmus thing happened. You know, you have Amanda Waller who's on the side of like, you know what? We took things too far. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I admit that we were wrong, whatever, like we can work with the justice league now. And, but then you have the general who's on the other side where he's like, no, he doubles down on what Cadmus was doing before. He's like, Mm -hmm. no, I need to do something now. I need to go fight these guys. I need to, you know, um, which I thought was a really interesting idea. Um, I think it's a really nice way to kind of finish off. I mean, not finish off the Cadmus story. Cause I mean, it already was, but like kind of just show like a little bit of an aftermath of like, here's where they are now. Um, but yeah. And he, he, you know, he does this whole Hulk thing and it's, he goes to the Superman, uh, parade, hoping Superman will be there. Obviously mm-hmm. isn't, but it, it kind of, it really reinforces this whole story of idea of like Cadmus sort of becoming what they're trying to fight against, especially yeah. in this guy specifically, he's trying to fight against like the, the guys who have all the power and everything, but he becomes a guy who has all the power. Who's actually, you know, threatening the people mm-hmm. a little bit. Like they set up to make that point perfectly because he gains powers to fight them all the superheroes that he is fighting none of them have powers yeah it's like the one who's closest to like having powers i guess would be star girl because like her staff cut technically makes her have power you know because she can fly mm-hmm. and stuff but she doesn't really have powers you know right Without so it's staff, like it's gone yeah yeah but it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of interesting how it's like, um, it's like the whole point of that of Cadmus is like protect in case the the super powerful people go rogue or go bad, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's like, okay, but you're just attacking them for nothing, you know? Like that's, it kind of gets, it, you know, again, it yeah. gets to that point where you're just taking it too far. Um, which interestingly enough at the end of the episode he kind of just ran away like ah I'll be like whatever I'll be back you know that kind of thing like, ah. <laughs> and then it was never addressed again it, I thought it would be nice to see if there was more of a con- a more conclusive end to his story because oh, um, yeah, it definitely. was just kind of ended on like a he could come back kind of thing uh, it was but he was telling the civilians to step aside and preaching about how supers were going to hurt them. He's just like, you're the only one with superpowers around here right now. Because yeah. all the heroes are normal people. All the yeah. civilians protecting them are normal people. And he just stops and goes, all right, I've become what I hate. I'll give you that. And then he runs off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... um but like even if like a super powered hero was there it would still be like you know what i mean like oh we're the ones who are at legitimately protecting these people who are here they like you know throughout the episode you see them they're like you know they're they're making sure that the people are getting safe they're mm-hmm. making you know they're protecting the people he's not he isn't paying attention to the people at all he's like oh yeah i'm going to destroy this building who cares whatever like in this fight it's like wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> you're supposedly protecting the people, but are you, you know? Um, yeah, no, I thought that was, that was really nice to see. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with the overarching plot of the season of this season. Uh, but it is a very nice kind of continuation or conclusion almost to like what 
is Cadmus doing now? What what has it led to now at this point? Um, so I really liked it. Yeah, I was just uh, love J.K. Simmons in general, but well, yeah, obviously, that's always Cave Johnson. We're done here. <laughs> yep. All right. Next up, as long as you're don't have anything more to say about that one, mm-hmm. is the Great Brain Robbery. So this is where Lex and a Flash's brain swap. I've been and waiting for this. This is it's pretty it's pretty fun. It's fun. I I love Flash in Lex Luthor's body. Yeah. He's I, hilarious. I, I love the dynamic of both of them switched because Oh, for sure. Just Yes, you are right. Like seeing Flash just flounder about trying to figure out what the heck is going on and trying to keep his cover up in Lex's body is glorious. Dude, the most the funniest line is <clears throat> he's in the there he's leaving the bathroom. Aren't you gonna wash your hands? <laughs> no, because I'm evil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Oh, that was that made me laugh. That was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and then watching Lex figure out the extent of Flash's powers, most of the stuff Flash already knows, but like him vibrating mm-hmm. the door to make it like shatter, like by resonating well, with it. And it's interesting how quickly he figures this stuff out too, which in mm-hmm. a way makes sense because Lex is a very intelligent person. Mm-hmm. Um, like very intelligent, resourceful. Every you know, he's known as like one of the smartest people on Earth, basically. You know, but so it, yeah, it addresses something about the Flash as well. That like, yeah, Lex can do that because you know the Flash can do that. And I forget who it was. It was a Green Lantern that was just like. Yeah, Flash knows that he can do that, but he doesn't because it's super dangerous and, it, mm-hmm. you know, highly unstable because it like, it looked like it was about to sh- shake the the entire station apart for a moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, um, yeah. And also it's like, uh, it's interesting just how like, it. Uh, this is also gives a good, a good a good sort of show for like just how difficult flash is to take down Mm because like so many of the justice league members are trying to take him down and they just can't (laughs) it's like it's very difficult for them like yeah he's there there's super speed right if you can Mm -hmm. just move fast whatever but the flash flash's super speed encompasses everything that he does every movement that he makes down to mm-hmm. his organs when he beat his heart so fast that it flatlines every yeah. little twitch every little vibration his very thought processes his super speed is so all encompassing in everything that he does he has so many options on how to utilize it that it becomes terrifying yeah yeah exactly it's like yeah it makes him just that much harder to take down (laughs) yeah no i i this this is i think overall this is just a really fun episode Mm -hmm. um but yeah where lex is just like well at the very least i can learn the flash's secret identity (laughs) (laughs) I don't, I don't know who this, this is. is. Yeah. It's yeah, no, I love that. Such a good moment. <laughs> who the hell? Well, because I mean, it makes sense because it's like. Yeah, he's just West some dude. doesn't have a presence in anything. Right. If it was Batman, he'd be like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bruce Wayne? Um. Yeah, exactly. Um, cause like Lex Luthor has met Bruce Wayne before in, in this universe, you know? Mm-hmm. So he'd be, he'd be like, 
quote. <laughs> um, yeah, overall, real fun episode. I don't have much more to say about it, though. <laughs> Ready to move on, if you yeah, are. I, I do think it was one of my favorites. Yeah, it was just it was just a really fun episode. Yeah, the concept was was really a good a good idea for mm-hmm. for an episode. It's one of the ones I remember the most from this season, honestly. Like like thinking back, you know, from having watched it years ago, that's one of the ones I remembered the most. Um, next up is Grudge Match. Um, so this is the one where the uh, roulette. St- starts the her meta brawl thing again but this time it's like women but it's specifically justice league women that she's mind controlling Mm -hmm. to fight each other um it's it was good (laughs) i i don't know again like a lot of these episodes i'm like yeah it was entertaining i just feel like there's not a lot to say about it you know it's like like, I think this episode did what it did well. Um, you know, I guess it was nice to see a little bit of, like, Huntress and um, Black Canary kind of their relationship develop a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Maybe they become a little bit more of friends than before. Because before they didn't really like each other that much. They're kind of like... Um, so that was probably... That was a little nice. Um, but also, like, the fights were cool. You know, obviously. it's They took all the, like women of the justice league you know and did some fighting and stuff which was which was actually really cool Mm -hmm. and i love how like it they 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 it's like it starts with like huntress fighting you know huntress and black canary who aren't being mind controlled being forced to fight like hawk girl and vixen they take they stop them from being mind controlled it's like okay great and then wonder woman it's all of them versus wonder woman and it's like oh yeah, Wonder Woman, of course, is so much more powerful than them. Wonder Woman is probably the strongest of all the female members of Justice Obviously, the strongest Justice League member is Superman. But, like, she's mm-hmm. probably the second strongest Justice League member, or close to it, at least. Yeah. Um, so it, like, takes all they have to just <laughs> fight her. So I just it, it was a, them it was a cool episode. Wonder Woman pop out and them all just, like prepping and backing up like oh shit they know and they're like it's wonder woman fuck (laughs) (laughs) what do we do uh yeah i mean i i'd be terrified of wonder woman if she was Mm -hmm. trying to fight me man um yeah yeah no overall it was a good episode i think it was a good way to bring back the whole that whole thing with the roulette and the the her uh fighting ring thing Mm-hmm. Uh, one moment that I want to mention is the momentary return of the question. Yes, as he yes. finds this thirty-second flavor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like I knew it. Thirty-six <laughs> flavors. Uh, oh my gosh. We needed more of question. I mean, like, I, it makes sense that he wouldn't fit into this season as well because of the plot. Like, obviously, he's very he fits very well with a storyline like Cadmus because it's all about this like government conspiracy thing. I need um, to just find more things with the question. Yeah, like comics or something. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know if he's in more like shows or anything. This might I don't not that I know of. Um, I mean, you could look it up, but um, yeah, no, I, I think he's 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 really fun in this show. I really like him. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, again, it would have been nice to see more of the question, but again, it's like okay, the main plot of the season it makes sense. Like he he doesn't you know because his his whole character is about like the conspiracy theories, all this stuff connecting, which fits really well with the Cadmus story, but um. <laughs> But that story's done, so. But yeah. uh, He's just so fun. Okay, apparently he's in Batman, the new, well, the new Batman Adventures, Just League Unlimited, obviously. Oh. Batman, the Brave and the Bold. Okay. Uh, So the new Batman Adventures is like a continuation of Batman, the animated series. So that's in this. mm -hmm. So he's appeared in this universe before Justice League Unlimited. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Okay, well, I'm watching the Batman the Animated Series, so I'll eventually get to that. Then in live action, he's an arrow. Uh, oh, so he is an arrow. arrow. Yeah. I mean, I just, I don't really like those shows that much, so I don't know. Mm. Um, um, DC Showcase Blue Beetle, as well as Scooby Doo and Batman the Brave and the Bold. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Uh, yeah, Brave Batman Brave and the Bold is very much like a very comical show. I think it's like it's just Batman meeting up with all these other superheroes and stuff throughout the show. And it's like, mm. yeah, I, from what I know, I, I don't I, I may have seen like an episode or so of it before. It came out somewhere in the 2000s. I don't really know when, like later 2000s, I think. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. So, uh Yeah. Love the question. He's, he's a good character. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I don't have much more to say about the episode. <laughs> Unless you do. I'm all good. Okay, the next episode is titled Far From Home, which is also the name of a Spider-Man movie, but um, we'll ignore that. Um, so this is the episode, the Supergirl episode. With the right. they travel into the future, the Legion mm-hmm. of Superheroes. So, interestingly enough, there's a show called the Legion of Legion of Superheroes, an animated show about them that came out. I looked it up. I think it came out the same year this season came out, but like the animation mm-hmm. style is different. It's like you know very different. And, like, the premise of the show is, like, yeah, it's, like, a thousand, you know, years after the Justice League, but it's, like, a a team of superheroes. And one of the characters in the show is Superman, but, like, a teenage version of Superman. They went back in time. The Superman as a teenager went forward in time and joined their team. So. Uh Uh-huh. Very interesting. Um, I saw this like a long time ago when I was a kid and <laughs> that show and I like vaguely remember it, but yeah. Hmm. Um, but I, I, I think it's interesting. So like this obviously is the, the sort of finale to Supergirl's character You're right. in the show, which I don't know how I feel about that. Like, it's like, <sighs> I don't know. Like the fact that she just like left everyone to be there, which I think is fine. Cause I mean, I guess like the whole idea is like, she kind of feels like, Oh, I, I can do more here. This is where I'm needed. Right. Cause it's like, Oh, we already have Superman here. Um, and she's already completed any training she needs and stuff. She's already like ready to like mm-hmm. go out on her own kind of. So it's like, they need a super, person um yeah it's it's an interesting decision because like obviously having more uh forces as strong as superman would be very helpful to anybody but it is the kind of thing of like they already have superman Mm mm-hmm so now that Supergirl is ready and she doesn't want to just be, you know, a second Superman, she can move to this area. Yeah. Well, yeah, she feels she I think she just feels like she's constantly in the, in Superman, living in Superman's shadow. Like, oh, right. I'm Superman's cousin. Like, that's that's who I am. Like, like, you know, but she wants to be more than just Superman's cousin. Mm-hmm. Um yeah and she meets a boy that she likes so (laughs) who is brainiac 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 five well that that was actually really funny at the end because superman just like so who's this boy that she met and it's like and then it ends and i'm like oh my yeah he's like well um hmm, you know um how do i put this uh (laughs) well (laughs) it's actually brainiac um (laughs) Uh, but not not the Brainiac you know. It's Brainiac Five, so which is a good Brainiac. <laughs> um, I, yeah. 
Just imagine him asking that to you, and you having to explain to the strongest man on the planet what his little cousin, or his, his cousin, is like trying to date his one of his worst enemies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, well, how do I put this? Uh, <laughs> um, so interesting so the the whole episode kind of starts the whole episode starts with us thinking oh she's gonna die supposedly i mean okay i didn't think that that was the case i thought from the beginning i was like oh it makes you think she's gonna die because like oh historically you know supergirl never returned from the you know three justice league members traveled in time only two returned um, mm-hmm. I knew I was like, oh, it's going to end with her deciding to stay in that time. Like, that's yeah, I, logically the ending. I never believed she would have died. I prob- I thought it would have just been like, I think my first thought was, oh, she wasn't a League member when she came back. Like, she quit the League after that or something like that. And then I noticed the relationship developing and it's like, oh, no, she's going to stay here. She's going to stay. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what happens. So. Um, yeah, I like because it was her, I think, Green Lantern and Green Arrow that traveled, was it? Yes, yes, mm-hmm. it is. So I like the choice of characters because, I mean, we've kind of set up from the beginning of the show that, like, a kind of a, a little, uh, nice, like, I want to say, like, father daughter or like older brother kind of relationship between her and green arrow Mm -hmm. kind of a nice dynamic between them and like there's been other episodes where you kind of see that a little bit too um and so i liked that he was in it to kind of you know go along with it um i think that made sense um and even like green lantern i guess because you know the, like he was in that very first episode of the show which had green lantern uh green arrow and uh supergirl well and um captain adam all on like a mission together so mm. it's kind of like nice like to see them be the ones to like be with her before yeah. she's like a nice full circle rounded ending yeah 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 um so i like that and i mm-hmm. mean i always like green Ar- green arrows are always a fun character in this show i just I, I, I just i enjoy him so much better in this show than when i watched the live action arrow mo- or tv yeah. show well he's basically a different character like he's so Completely. much more like serious in that show like he's mm-hmm. he's like discount Batman in that show basically you know like he's like yeah like if you tried to make Green Arrow Batman but like Green Arrow but like personality of Batman it's like you know (laughs) a little bit kind of at least he's kind of like that in that show you know a little bit more um, where it's like I think you know traditionally the character has always been like a more just fun like joking kind of guy um yeah, I, I, I really like his personality in this show. Um, and this this show is like my introduction to Green Arrow as a character. Like this is what I know him from, what I knew him from. So when I watched Arrow, uh, the live action show, I, I always kind of thought the character was off a little bit because this is yeah. what I was used to, you know. I think um, my introduction was the Arrow show. And now that I'm watching yeah. this one, I'm like, this is so much better. Why did they do that? Yeah, yeah. It's like, come on. <laughs> Um, and I don't think it has anything to do with the actor. I think the actor, Stephen Amell, probably could play a more fun version of the character if he wanted to. But it's just, you know, the way the character is written. Um, but but yeah, no, I, I really like him him as a character a lot. Sometimes I like, like a lot of these characters I want to see more of. And it's like, it almost makes me wish that they had made more of this show. Just so I could see more of them, like Question, Green Arrow... You know, you know, even a lot of the other ones, like it's just, you know, I just I want to see more of them. But uh, sadly, this is all there is. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this is this is a really good episode mm-hmm. uh, for a nice send off for Supergirl. 
Was like this a... the first time they introduced a or a level twelve intellect or whatever they called it? Did uh maybe. Because Berniak was a level twelve intellect, and then in the final episode there was that whole scene with Luther where he's like, You need to be a level twelve intellect. And it's like, great, I'm overqualified. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it might be. It might be. Because that is like a thing that's like in like, you know, a lot of mm-hmm. comics and stuff with you know. Um Yeah, I don't know. But uh I'm ready to move on if you are. Yeah, sure. Next up is ancient history, and here is finally um, the continuation of the whole Hawkman storyline. Right. So we finally find out the story, which, you know, like, I'm surprised, like, what they're able to get away with in a kid's show. Oh, yeah, like full on adultery and cheating. Yeah, like, like, there's no, like, I, you know, I, like, like, literally, like, he finds them dead in a bed together, you know, mm-hmm. like, like, I don't know, like, it's, they, <laughs> okay, I was so shook when that happened, because you see, like, the pool of red as it pans up, and then you realize, oh, it's just the wine from the cup. Yeah, yeah, for a second, I was like, is that the blood? And then like, I was like, there's oh, no sh- way they're showing blood, right? <laughs> but like, I, they did that on purpose, for sure, to kind mm-hmm. of give the symbolism of like, oh, it's they're dead. It's like blood. But like, I they weren't allowed to straight up just show blood everywhere. Right. So obviously, so I was like, oh, no, it's just it's just wine from a wine glass. <laughs> Um, which, you know, I love when when like kids shows do that, whether they come so close, they come as close as they are allowed to, to like yeah. the darker stuff. And it's like, it's great. I, I really liked the story, like the backstory thing. Like it was mm-hmm. interesting. Um, I think we talked about that in the one episode of the Normal Justice League where Aquaman cuts his hand off and he wraps it in a r- already red cloth so that they right. don't have to show the blood staining it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, they're very clever with that kind of thing. Yeah, I really like that. Um, But yeah, there's so many, like, lines or moments in this show in general where I'm like, damn, like, this is a kid's show. Uh, There's another one I was thinking Mm -hmm. of that was, like, a sexual reference in this season that I can't remember where it happened or what it was. I remember remember there was one that was very, like, over, like, I don't Mm. remember what it was, though. Um. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, I just remember a very yeah. like, yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, maybe I'll remember it. I don't know. <laughs> I remember from previous seasons it might have been normal Justice League as well. I, uh, I'm the fastest man alive. Maybe that's why you can't get a girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was like season one of Justice yeah. League, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then there's all the all the ones where they like almost say a swear word, but they don't. Yep. Kiss my axe. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. I, le- I just remembered it. I rem- just remembered the one I was thinking of. So in the in the first Hawkman episode. Mm hmm. Is this is the line? There, um, Hawkgirl and Hawkman are. So they went out on their first date. She was like in a nice dress and everything, right, for their date. Mm-hmm. And then the next day they go out to like their expedition in uh, in Egypt, you know. And she's dressed back in her like normal outfit, and he like looks at her. And he's like, "Oh, I missed the dress." And she goes, "You didn't miss it last night." <laughs> And I was like, oh, that is, that is really towing the line right there mm-hmm. for a kid's show. <laughs> it's like, okay. I just, I think it's hilarious when there's stuff like that. And I'm just like, that was, that's <laughs> like, man, my mom let me watch this when I was a kid. Darn. Okay. Um, <laughs> that, that was the line. I, I literally paused it and I was like, this is a kid show. Like what? 
I had to pause it for a second and laugh, but um, yeah. Anyways, so continuing. Uh, so Vixen is in this episode as well because the dude needs all three of the people who were involved in the memory, I guess, um, to show mm-hmm. everybody. So it, it, that was interesting because the first episode of this, like I thought the shadow guy was like just, you know, he was just some guy who was like a shadow who was like a typical criminal thief or whatever. Yeah. It kind of implied that or at least it's made it seem like that. But in this, it's like, it turns out, oh no, he's like a shadow. That's like a man of festation mm-hmm. of like Hawkman's like, uh, I don't know. His negative inner, thoughts. Yeah, his negative thoughts and stuff. And it's like, yeah. So he really wants to, that's why he wants to get everybody there to show them what happened. And he's like, you have to, You. he's trying to get him to be like, you have to take what's yours. She's, you know, kill him, take her. She's mm-hmm. yours, whatever. But, which I, by the end of it, you know, it, it actually showed that in the end of it, um, he be, he actually does the right thing. And he's like, you know what? No. He's like, I have to let her choose what she wants instead of pushing for it, which was a nice kind of a nice conclusion because it's like he's finally like accepting the fact that like, you know, just because they were lovers in the past in a past life or whatever doesn't mean they're, you know, that she has to be with you now. It's kind of like, you know, you got to let her, you know be with who she wants you gotta let her live her yeah. life the way she wants you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, which I really liked um, although by the end of it uh, Green Lantern says like yeah he's still gonna continue dating Vixen and they never really brought it up after that so I, I always was kind of thinking they would by the end of it have him end up with Hawk Girl again by the mm-hmm. end of the show because um, I mean we still know to this day that you know they have a kid together in the future. I I do like <laughs> Green Lantern's reasoning behind it, though, where he's just like, I'm not going to be a puppet to Destiny. If yeah. I'm going to get with you, I'm going to do it because I want to. Not yeah, exactly. I know yeah, no, I do happen. really like that. It's like, I'm going to make the decision for myself. I'm not going to do it because I you know, saw what the future holds and I feel like I have to fulfill the future, which that's kind of the, the, the theme of the episode in general, because that's kind of what Carter Hall has to go through him being like, Oh, I don't, we don't have to, I don't have to force you to be with me because I think it's destiny or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like let's, you have to live your life the way you want. It doesn't matter what you think your destiny is supposed to, you have to do things because you want to do them. You have to, live life in the way because that's what you want to do not because you feel like you have to for destiny's uh sake yeah which i thought was really a really nice uh message for the episode to have yeah <clears throat> but um yeah i don't know if i have a lot more to say i'm all good so there's two episodes left, Alive and Destroyer. They are connected, um, but they are also very different. So Alive is the episode where all the supervillains get in a big kerfuffle, you know, a big fight, if mm-hmm. you will, um, which is really fun because uh, Lex Luthor is so obsessed with his plan that everybody's like, um, what, what are you doing? Can we like, you know actually do some villain stuff please and he's like no i gotta find brainiac um yeah gotta chief godhood real quick hold on <laughs> hold up um but and he gets this like vision of where brainiac is and it shows you know the where we last saw brainiac in the show really well not where we last saw I mean where technically where we last saw brainiac was in the last season in in Lex Luthor but like another form of Brainiac the last time before that, which was in that, that planet where thing that where dark side was where dark side mm-hmm. died in at the beginning of season two of justice league. Um, and right then I knew, which I mean, I knew this cause I've seen it before, but I knew I was like, Oh, he's going to go there thinking he's going to find uh, Brainiac, but he's not, he's going to find dark side. <laughs> Um, I mean, this episode, most of this episode is literally just fun with the villains fighting each other. Yeah. That's like 
that's the episode really i don't think does it even really show the superheroes really at all in this episode not that i can remember yeah like i think it's literally just well because like i think it might end with them showing up at the superheroes like we need your help or actually that might be at the beginning of the next episode <laughs> um but yeah so i don't have a lot to say about it it was, it was fun like i mean there was a lot of you know, fun moments of them fighting each other and stuff, but... Uh. Right. I, uh, first of all, the moment where they're, like, all gathered up, like, all the traitors, and Lex is just like, can any of you give me even one reason why I should let you live? Care Frost, Frost walks up to the front, turns around, freezes all the others. She's like, just there like, you go. Yeah. Now, Killer Frost is a fun character. Some I kind of wish she was in it more. She's just like, I don't know. She's just kind of fun character. I I like her. She's yeah, intense. Yeah. She's intense. She mm-hmm. likes killing. Um, Hence I think that's name. literally her thing. She just likes killing. Like in the in the um first episode, she was introduced. She was on like like uh, uh Grodd's team. Mm-hmm. That was in season two of Justice League. And he's like, oh, I'm not. These people aren't motivated by money like Lex's team was. The, this person wants this. This person wants this. She just likes killing. <laughs> 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 and then there was that one time they were like, they were going to the place to get um, to get Clayface. And they're like, no, don't kill it. No, you can't kill him. She's like, oh, man. Yeah, because he, we needed the information from him or whatever. And then, like, after the end, like, they're walking and she, like, looks and sees him. And she's like, hold on a second. Like, she goes just to kill him and then leaves. Yeah. <laughs> like, she just, okay. She just really likes killing people. Um, But, yeah. Yeah. No, it was it was a fun episode. Um, yeah. And the last episode is titled Destroyer. Which Dark Side comes back, tries to destroy Earth, just to get back a Superman, basically. Um, mm-hmm. I I like that whole thing of like, realistically, I don't think Dark Side cares that much about conquering Earth in this episode. I feel like he's just doing it to get back at Superman. Yeah, pretty much like. Every time that he, you know, preaches about how he's going to cause the world to burn and all his friends to be killed and whatnot, it's always just directed at Superman. And he's like, yeah, and I, I'm going to kill you after all that so you can watch it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and it was interesting, like, on, on um, what's his planet called? Apocalypse. Apocalypse, yeah. It's like the two sides factions are like warring against each other and he just shows up and everybody's like, oh, Dark Side's back. Uh, <laughs> bow down. Everybody bow down and follow him, you know? Like back there's no like hesitation. Usual. Yeah, there's no hesitation. Uh they, it's like it's like when Dark Side's not there, they're all like, Who's gonna be in charge? Let's fight over it. Ah, when Dark Side's there, everybody's like, Yep, no question, you're in charge. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no it's it's great um yeah i mean this i think this is this is an episode where it's like the it as a it works as the finale to a show because it's the big you know it's the, the big battle the big battle one of the biggest villains in all of dc um but it it's it doesn't create for a super interesting story overall but it's a very it's still it's- a great Finale. It's a real factor, yeah. Yes. Um, I just love it because there's this whole season is building up between the two teams, superhero and supervillains, all teamed up together. And yes. then Darkseid shows up and, oh, bigger enemy. Let's both focus on that right now. And so it's everybody fighting against all his minions and the entire army of apocalypse mm. and then the main event of just superman and dark side duking it out which i love the moment where superman's like superman's like 
you know, everybody's like all the other heroes always wonder if they're powerful enough or whatever. He's like, I have a different problem. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm walking through a, uh, I feel like I'm always walking through a city of cardboard made of cardboard. And like, <laughs> it's like, I have to hold back. But now you give me, you give me a so. chance to cut loose. And I then he just, boom, mm. it was <laughs> beautiful um i feel like that's like a full-on like apology for like the season one of 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 justice league where oh, superman yeah, was a total bitch um it was like yeah no the superman is back <laughs> justice league is like both justice league and unlimited is superman just ramping up realizing okay people can take this much people can take this much i don't have to wince at this anymore you know all this stuff that i've been holding back for so long i can slowly like release and release and release until this is what ex- is acceptable for mm. this situation and this situation and finally gets the dark side and he's just like yeah oh i don't have to hold back at all right yeah now. yeah mm-hmm. uh but then the way it ends is interesting as well because it ends with lex going with that time traveling dude or whatever not time tra- I don't know whatever he was and getting the anti-life equation thing mm-hmm. and then coming back and using it to like you know obviously distract dark side he's like oh you finally got what you wanted and then they disappear to who knows where did they die did they you know whatever um who knows but I don't know. I, I felt like the episode, because of that whole plot line, mm-hmm. it did feel a little rushed. I, I did feel a little bit like it would have been nice if there was like one more episode to the like for the finale to like make it a two part finale where you could mm-hmm. really, you know, get into that more. Because it was like there was a scene. It felt so quick to me. Like there was a scene where Lex goes in that thing to get the anti-life equation. We don't see him again. We don't see what happens in there. Like, I don't know. I just feel like there could have been more. It felt very quick to me. Yeah. I, I probably would have rather the fight just continue and end as, you know, between Superman and dark side and there be the aftermath and all that. And, you know, it just could have been this big finale fight and not, Lex just showing up out of nowhere saying, right. well, I got my power suit just wearing a normal tux and then exploding with him with the anti-life equation. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I don't know. I, I feel like, because I love that moment where Superman's having that speech about how he has to hold back all the time, but now he has a chance to cut loose, whatever. Mm-hmm. But then he he does that for like a minute and then Darkseid has his like thing where he like traps him or whatever. And I was like, I don't know. It felt like, like, I feel like it would have been a much better, more satisfying finale if he had said that whole speech. And then he did just literally freaking kill Darkseid, like freaking beat his ass till he, I mean, because, you know, Superman typically doesn't like to kill, but, you know, Darkseid is one of the exceptions where Superman's okay mm-hmm. with killing him, right? Um, as we've established before. Um, I, I do think that would have been a stronger finale, like, I don't know, it would have just felt more impactful. Um, and then we wouldn't have to sort of distract with this whole side plot of, like, Lex traveling with this guy to this place. And, like, um, I mean, I guess it does make Lex Luthor seem like a more important character to the finale. Because it's, like, he's been built up so much in this show, obviously, as being, like, the most important, one of the most important villains um, in the last season and in this season as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So it kind of is like, oh, it gives him something to do in the finale to make him still feel like a really important character. Um, But at the same time, it's like, I feel like we've already had enough of Lex being a really important character. Like we didn't need it necessarily. I get what you're saying. Yeah. But I don't know. I just think it would have been nice to see Superman actually be the one to take down Darkseid Um, because it is the finale. You know, it is the end of the DC animated universe. Like if it wasn't the end i'd be like oh yeah they're setting it up for like him dark side to come back or whatever it's fine <laughs> but like it is the end like yeah just have him freaking murder dark side right then and there great <laughs> <laughs> um 
I think that would be a great finale. But no, other than that, it was a great finale. I still really liked it. But um, and then like you know, it, it ended with with showing all the Justice League running downstairs, which was really nice. Ending with Batman because he's the one who started it all. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, I don't have much more to say about the finale. Yeah, I mean the season as a whole, I really enjoyed. Yeah, I think so. I think it definitely is. It, it very much works as a finale season of like, yeah. like they already completed their big kind of plot line that they've been spent so much time building up in the last season. You know, um, you know the whole thing with Lex becoming president that was hinted at for a, a long time. There's all these other little details of like hints towards like Cadmus, even in previous seasons of justice league but also you know maybe even the superman show i think a little bit like there's so many other things that built up to that season and then it's like okay they already did that now we just need a season to just be a nice big fun finale Mm -hmm. of like a bunch of super villains a bunch of superheroes build it up have that final episode uh dark side like who's going to be the main villain at the end oh dark side because you know he's like one of the biggest most powerful villains and dc so of course you know so yeah i think it works as a as a as a grand finale <laughs> but yeah. uh yeah um i don't have much more to say about it though i'm all good over here all right i mean we have been going for an hour and 20 minutes so it's you know mm-hmm. makes sense uh but yeah anyways thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of what ban um you can listen to this podcast on many different platforms, including the Waban YouTube channel, which is titled uh, Waban. There's a link in the description to that. You can also listen to this podcast on many different audio platforms, including uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, and many more. Um, you can also check out my YouTube channel, which is called NIM TV. There's a link in the description of that as well. That's N I M T V. And you can listen to a new episode of this podcast every single Saturday at noon Eastern Standard Time. Next week, we are going to be talking about a movie, as we usually do. Uh, and that movie is The Lighthouse from 2019, uh, starring Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe. Um, it's a movie I've been wanting to see for a while. It seems like a very interesting psychological movie. Um, so I'm very excited for that. Uh, so that'll be next week. And the week after that, we're going to start a new TV show. Uh, it is not uh, going to be DC. We're, we're done with DC for a while, I think. Um, we're all DC'd out at this point. Um, so we're going to be talking about Castlevania. That's what it's called? Yeah, Castlevania. Yes. Uh, the Netflix original anime. It is It is technically anime, right? Like, it, I, I believe so. Like, Japanese made, but like, it's for Netflix. I think. I don't know if it's Japanese made. It might be. Might not be. Well, it's like I don't know. Whatever. It's it's a Netflix original animated show. Um, it looks pretty cool. I've seen like shots of what the action looks like. It looks pretty mm-hmm. cool. So oh, yeah, we're gonna great. be doing that next. That's the sh- that'll be two weeks from now. Um, next week will be uh, the Lighthouse. So yeah, definitely look forward to that. Um, that's about all for uh, this week on Waban um, I've been Nim and I'm Cub goodbye everyone bye bye